Durham, New Hampshire likely brings to mind students bustling around the campus of the University of New Hampshire. Fall in Durham is, I think, extra special because of the energy the college creates. But there's more to be found in this college town not far from Portsmouth, where historic spaces welcome new visitors. On the weekends or after school, we notice a lot of people stopping by just to, just to hang outdoors for that last bit of enjoyable weather. We stop by Emory Farm to soak up a sunny and mild autumn day. The historic property spans 120 acres with space for agriculture and recreation. Here's your cider donut. Holly Philbrick owns and operates the farm's market and cafe. We have become a bit of a community hub for all things local. Over 90% of everything we have in there is from New England. We bake them fresh every day. Philbrick and her team make the apple cider donuts on site daily with a machine that portions out the dough and fries the tasty treats. And of course, I had to get in on the final step. And you absolutely have to try it while it's still warm okay, because well, that that's, is the- That's an invitation. Yes. Other seasonal fun includes a corn maze and wagon rides. There are pumpkins of all shapes and sizes for sale, along with mums. Emory Farm has been in Durham for centuries. It actually dates back to the 1600s, and it's been owned by one family the entire time. When people say, are you the farmer, I hold up my hand and I say, you don't see blisters. David Hills took over managing the farm after his grandfather's death. I was talking to the local historian and she looked at me and she said, do you realize how extraordinary it is that you're the 10th generation? Our understanding is that we're the oldest family farm in the country. We all try to work together to make everything fit together and to make the farm sustainable. Appreciating the beauty of nature is part of the fabric of Durham. Just across the street from Emory Farm is Wagon Hill Farm, one of many preserved properties in the town. We try to have a variety of different experiences, whether it's just somebody out for a short walk with their dog, or whether somebody's out for a long mountain bike ride. Tom Brightman is the land stewardship coordinator for Durham. Dwayne Hyde is a Durham resident and land conservation director for the Southeast Land Trust of New Hampshire. It's such a great place to live in Durham because you know, you, you know these places are gonna be here forever. Southeast Land Trust is one of Durham's many partners in land conservation efforts. We're standing on the Sweet Trail, which is a four mile trail that goes between Long Marsh parking lot here and the Nature Conservancy Preserve at the Great Bay. I've been walking this trail we're standing on every Christmas Eve with my kids since they were born, I'm carrying them in their backpack. This place means a lot to me because my kids are now 21 and 16, but they still do my Christmas Eve hike out in the woods here with me. A trail walk might leave you hungry and you'll want to bring your appetite to our next stop. Wow, this is unbelievable. I don't even know how to <laughs> wrap my head around all this food. Chef Bobby Marcotte sat down with us at his colorful, creative burger restaurant, Hop and Grind. I want to give people that down home comfort food, but I just don't want to do it the way that everybody else does. Marcotte's riff on burgers and fries starts with the patty. All the restaurant's meat is house ground. Heaps of seasoning are mixed right in. We actually grind ingredients into our burger patties and start with the patty itself when we're building flavors, and then we kind of do toppings to match. Hop and Grind's version of a double cheeseburger goes big. Two patties, two types of cheese, sweet pickles, lots of bacon topped with crispy onions. They call it beast mode. All right, I gotta dive into one of Please, these. Please, by all means. I think I'm going beast mode. That's a great way to start. That's a good entry level burger. First of all, it's true to its name, that's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a whole mouthful once you <laughs> actually absolutely, take a bite. Absolutely. When it's time to settle in for the night, wrap yourself in history at one of the oldest homes in Durham, which is now the Three Chimneys Inn. It was built in 1649 by Valentine Hill. Karen Meyer is the innkeeper at Three Chimneys, where there are 23 rooms divided between the main house and the carriage house next door. A sale and renovation in 1997 transformed the property from private home to inn. It was falling to ruins, really falling to ruins in the photographs that I have seen and the stories I've heard. 
Parts of the building's history remain. In the upstairs dining room and the downstairs tavern, original elements from the 1600s can still be found. The tavern was basically stripped. They kept the original granite down there. The fireplace was a bread oven. There are wide pine floors in the coppers dining room that you cannot find anywhere. It's they're beautiful. There's a lot of people that care about the historic district of the town. It's a great, great town. Durham, New Hampshire, a community connected through history and nature.